Welcome to part 13 of Project E55 ASL and this video is going to be about making the push rod setup for the rear suspension. Um, in the previous video I made this whole multi-link suspension so the last part left for the suspension now is to connect the push rod and the coilover shocks. Um, I'm using the same coilover shocks that I used in the front suspension because the car will have pretty close to a 50-50 width distribution by the time it's done. So it makes sense to stick with the same coilover shocks at the rear that uh, were at the front. Um, once I'm done with the whole push rod suspension, I'm also going to be doing some finishing up on this back part of the chassis. Like there's a few more braces that have to go in there for triangulation and also for the uh, mounting points of the differential. So hopefully by the end of this video, you guys should see the car standing on all four wheels on its own. Like it pretty much should be a rolling chassis. I should be able to move it around on all four wheels. So I'm definitely really excited about that. Um, let's see how everything goes. So for making this push rod suspension, I'm going to start off by making the cantilevers and then um, well, if you remember from the last video when I was making the multi-link suspension, I mentioned that I um, left this one extra ball joint in here. And what this ball joint is for is um, it's for a push rod that is going to connect from this ball joint to the cantilever that's going to go somewhere over here. And then that cantilever is going to connect to the push uh, or the coilover shock that is going to go like at this part over here. And then I'll obviously have to fabricate the attachment point for that coilover shock as well. So still quite a lot of fabrication work that is left to do but let's start off by making the cantilever and then get to the rest of it. For making the cantilever I started off by printing the design of the cantilever and after that I cut this paper in the same shape to make a template. After that I used the paper template to copy the same shapes onto sheet metal and then cut that using an angle grinder. After that I center punched all the holes where the mounting points for the coilover shock and the push rod had to go. And then later I drilled holes there using a step drill so the damper and the push rod could be mounted. After that I got to welding this bearing race at the bottom of this um, cantilever. This design is slightly different from the design I used on the front suspension. The wheel spring rates are going to be the same but because the geometry of the suspension is slightly different on the front and the rear, I had to change the cantilever design around a little to um, try to achieve close to the same wheel spring rates at the front and at the back. Once everything was bolted in place and held in its proper position, next I finished up on the welding for the um, bearing race. And once that was all welded, I also added this extra support on top of the cantilever just to make it a little stronger. Once all the welding was complete, next I had to put these ball bearings in place. So uh, for that I just used a socket and a hammer and I just hammered these bearings in place. After all that was done, next I had to get to making the attachment point where this cantilever has to attach to the chassis of the car. Um, this was a little tricky because this had to go on a really specific angle and getting the angle right took me a few attempts. Like I had to tack weld it in place and then break the tacks off and then um, re-weld it. And then finally I just bolted the cantilever in place and I checked, made, made sure that the angle was right and the cantilever was, was lining up with the ball joint on the suspension properly. And once the position was figured, then I just added this extra support at the back of that um, sheet metal piece just to make it of the appropriate strength to support the cantilever. Here's a look at the cantilevers after they are mounted in place and this is how the whole thing is going to move. So this part of the coilover shock is obviously going to be attached to the attachment point that I still have to make. And this point is going to go to the push rod, which is going to go to that ball joint then. So yeah, that, that is the next part. I have to make the push rods next. For making the push rod, it's going to be a pretty similar process to how I made these links in the last video. So one ball joint is left hand threaded and the other one is right hand threaded. So by turning this um, link, I can actually um, like change the height of the car, like make the link longer or shorter. Also, a couple of people were asking in the comment section of the last video whether the rear of the car was jacked up. Um, but actually it's not jacked up. This is actually the rear of the car is at its uh, right height right now. Both the front and the rear are, are at right height right now. This is the way it's supposed to be sitting and you can tell that by looking at the axles. The axles are pretty much in a straight line right now. The reason it, the rear looks higher than the front is well because it is higher than the front. Um, the way the floor of the car is shaped is that I mentioned it in a previous video actually that um, the whole uh, floor of the car is actually shaped with the diffuser. So it's actually like a curved shape. It's not a flat floor. Um, I did some CFD early on when I was designing the car and I found out that this shape is actually the shape that works out best for uh, making the most downforce underneath the car. Even on Formula 1 cars and stuff, if you look at their floors there, um, it's going to be like a wedge shape, like the front of the car is going to be much lower than the back of the car. But in Formula 1 and stuff, there's a lot of regulations that regulate how big the diffuser can be. That's why it's not really optimized to the fullest. 
but since in time attack or in, in the in the category that this car is going to be competing in in the exhibition class there's not really um, any rules that regulate how the floor should be designed or anything that's why it's best to go with whatever works best um, you guys are going to see more on that in the later videos when i do get to making all the body panels and stuff but yeah for now let's get back to making the push rods so for making the push rods yeah, it was pretty much just a repeat of what i showed in the last video just cutting the tubes to length and then inserting that threaded part on both sides and just welding everything together really apologize if i'm not covering everything in too much detail in this video but there's already a 20 minute video that i made when i was making the front push rod suspension for this car in which i explained all the benefits of the push rod suspension all the calculations behind it and everything so I don't want to repeat all the same things in this video, that's why I'm keeping it short. But I'll make sure to link that video in the description below and also add a video card so you guys can find it. Once the push rods were made, I just had to bolt them in place and I had to get the angle of the cantilever right by changing the length of the push rod. So I was measuring the angle and shortening the push rod at the same time. Because the cantilever does have to be at a certain angle when the car is at right height for the suspension to work properly. Now the push rods are in place and the last thing to do for this suspension is to fabricate the attachment points for these coilover shocks. So for fabricating the attachment points what I've done is that I've jacked the car up to its maximum ride height. And the reason is because these coilover shocks are also in their maximum extended position right now because there's no load on them so that's why they're extended all the way. So to match the position of the attachment points I've jacked the car up so that these cantilevers are also extended all the way. Um, so now for fabricating these attachment points, I'm going to go the quick easy way, actually the same way I went with the front suspension when I was making the push rod suspension on the front. Um, I'm just going to be welding a square tube from one side to the other, and then on that square tube I'm just going to fabricate attachment points and just bolt these coilover shocks in this exact position, and then when I lower the jack for the final time, hopefully these springs should compress and um, return the car to its proper ride height if my calculations are right with the spring rate and everything, which hopefully they should be right. So making the attachment points for the coilover shocks was easy enough. I started off by cutting this square tube to length. After that I welded this square tube in place. And next I had to get to angle grinding some sheet metal again for cutting out these attachment points for the coilover shock. Once the sheet metal was cut I just center punched a hole for the bolting point of the shock. After that I just bolted two of these pieces together to form the attachment point and then just welded it to the square tube that I added earlier. And then lastly I welded this flat bar on one side to give this attachment point a bit of extra support. Once all that was done, it was finally time to lower the car on all four wheels for the first time. So I just lowered the car on all four wheels for the first time and um, it's actually amazing to see how light this car is just pushing this car around. Um, it's actually so easy to move around, I can actually push this car up my garage just by one hand. It's, um, it's amazing to see how light this car is. Um, with the E55 I remember I couldn't even push the car up this garage by myself, that's how heavy that car was. Um, the other really cool thing is you can actually see the whole propeller shaft and everything moving right now because none of the bodywork is there right now. The springs also compressed by exactly the right amount when I lowered the car, so um, that means that the weight of the car and also the spring rates would have worked out really close to where they should be, so the car is actually sitting at its perfect right height, like where it should be sitting, um, both at the front and at the rear. Um, obviously the car is going to gain some weight right now when I put in the seats and all the components that are going to go in the car, um, but the thing is that right now the springs are under zero preload, 
Um, when at the final weight of the car, I think I will need to add like one centimeter of preload on the spring. So compress it one centimeter and that will compensate for all the weight that is still to be added on this car. But anyways, the part that is still left on this um, rear section is making these like finishing up on these attachment points of the differential and also um, adding some extra braces in here that still need to be added in. Here's how far I got with um, reinforcing these mounting points of the differential. I'm done with these two mounting points, but I still have some work left on the front. Um, but I'm planning to call it a day over here because this is a lot of work. Like each of these tubes need to be notched and then they need to be welded 360 degrees. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of work, but the reason I am doing it this way rather than the way it was done in the E55, like if you remember the E55 subframe, it had a like big piece of sheet metal over here and then um, two mounting points welded to that piece of sheet metal, which is actually a really easy way of doing it, but the problem is that you end up with a lot of that weight. Um, doing it this way, you can choose all the tubes in the appropriate thicknesses, and these are really thin wall tubes by the way, so they don't weigh an awful lot and um, they end up pretty much equally as strong as what the E55 subframe would have been. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a much more lighter way of doing it, but it's a lot harder doing it this way. Um, but yeah, I still have a bit of finishing up to do on this back part of the chassis, which I'm probably just gonna leave for the next video. Talking about the next video, I have a whole bunch of parts lying around in my basement waiting to be installed in the car, um, like the seats, the pedal box, the fuel cell, and um, a bunch of other parts. So in the next part, I'm gonna be mounting the seats, um, the five point racing harness and all those things in the chassis. And uh, the reason I want to do that right now is because I want to figure out the mounting points for the seats, for the fuel cell and for all these other components that need to be mounted in the car. And once all that is figured, I'm gonna be unbolting everything one final time, giving the chassis a quick paint. So definitely try to stay tuned for that one. That one should be a really long and interesting video, but this is everything for now. Thanks a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one. Music